Good morning and welcome to the Clean Edge Razor case analysis response. Our group consisted of Frank Delanero, Patrick Call, Sandra Mascara Davidson, Jonathan Scudder, Julie Short, Marissa Zippai, and myself, Krista Jacobs. Together, we carefully analyzed the case presentation and have put together several additional recommendations for Paramount to grow their company with the Clean Edge Razor. This graph illustrates Paramount's current product market landscape. The points on the graph indicate the growth percentage year over year of each product. From 2007 through 2010, growth of this product line remained steady and ahead of all other segment product markets. That said, although the market after 2009 has been becoming increasingly crowded with offerings, there is an appetite from consumers for non-disposable razor products in the market and a declining thirst for both dilapidatories and shaving cream. The industry as a whole has been growing steadily since 2007. Individuals are spending more money on products within the disposable and non-disposable sectors. Currently, Paramount produces two products within the moderate and the value sectors, which are the Paramount Pro and the Paramount Avail, respectively. The super premium market in which Clean Edge should be categorized is the smallest volume driver. However, it comprises 34% of total dollar sales. Therefore, there is an opportunity to earn higher revenues if Clean Edge is introduced into the super premium segment to a concentrated niche audience. Additionally, evaluating the product segment in 2009 demonstrates that Paramount has an opportunity to gain significant stake in the super premium category if they launch it as a niche product. The company currently enjoys a 23.3% retail share for its Paramount Pro and Paramount Avail products and the company sees over $170 million in revenue due to non-disposable razor and refill cartridge sales in the U.S. If Paramount introduces a super premium product into the market to a niche audience, there is an opportunity to divert buyers from Prince and Bennett and Klein, the two largest competitors in the sector. Paramount entered the disposable razor industry in 1962 and quickly became a respected brand. The company maintained its strongest position within the men's shaving category. As illustrated on the previous slide, Paramount's bread and butter product, Paramount Pro, is their current leading product targeted at the moderate segment. The competitive landscape is a dynamic one. While the Clean Edge product is a non-disposable razor, it still has to compete with disposable razors. Electric razors also represent competition for Paramount, and these razors occupy the majority of the order market in a moderate percentage of the overall market because they are easy to use. The top four competitors of the relevant non-disposable razor market are Prince, Bennett and Klein, Radiance, and Simpsons, and com comprise a combined 56% of the market share according to, the, to 2010 estimates. These competitors also occupy the space where the new product, Clean Edge, may be marketed, which is the super, super premium segment. One thing to note is that Bennett and Klein, as well as Prince, are outspending Paramount on advertising by a substantial amount. Several different marketing names were considered throughout this process, with the top three choices listed here. The recommended final product name is Paramount's Clean Edge. The crisp and concise name is one that will stick in customers' minds and become easily recognizable in the market. In addition, the pro product is aging and getting to the end of its product life cycle. Clean Edge can eventually become the viable replacement for the Pro. By keeping the close association of the Clean Edge name to Paramount, it will help this transition from the niche market to the mainstream market that Paramount already dominates. The 2010 budget was $48.3 million, with $20.2 million for advertising and $28.1 million for consumer and trade promotions. With a company looking to curb marketing expenses, However, creative advertising strategies are needed without compromising the company's current brand authenticity. Innovative and low-cost marketing strategies for this well-known brand were created in the business proposal. Part of the marketing budget will be spent on product packaging design. We recommend bright blue as the main font color on the clear packaging. Clear plastic packaging allows for the consumer to preview what they are purchasing, which will increase consumer attraction and overall attentiveness to the product. As far as advertising goes, TV commercials are costly, coming in at an average of $475,000 per 30-second spot to air during popular TV shows. A more cost-effective method for Paramount's Clean Edge is using magazine and online advertising. Additionally, 
printing coupons and weekend newspaper ads and inside the packages of Paramount's other products will encourage consumer purchases. Since the cannibalization rate of the niche product positioning is only 35% compared to 60% of the mainstream positioning, the company can go for a name that emphasizes Paramount to build its brand equity. Niche product positioning accompanied by a branding that is distinct from the current products would significantly decrease the rate of cannibalization and potentially increase profits without imposing a great impact on Paramount's brand equity. Mainstream product positioning with a name that emphasizes Paramount's brand would build the company's brand equity, but this strategy would not be the most profitable. The best option for the company is to go for a niche product positioning with a name that emphasizes Paramount's brand to remain consistent with the company's strategy of building its name equity. Looking at the niche product positioning, it is evident that it is the best choice to position Paramount's new product. This position represents greater operating profits compared to the mainstream position for the first year and a significant amount of operating profits for the second year. Overall, after taking into consideration the cannibalization rates, the niche product positioning would generate total profits of $24 million compared to only $2.8 million generated by the mainstream position. Mainstream does look good initially. However, incorporating its 60% cannibalization rate and the costs shows that there is significant profit loss in the first year. Looking at the mainstream product positioning, we can see that initially it looks like a good choice to position Paramount's new product. The year one operating profit after cannibalization shows that Paramount would lose money in year one due to cannibalizing the market share with the Avail and Pro. Although year two would run a better looking profit, the total profit for the first two years would only be $2.8 million. The cannibalization rate and costs of an out of the niche product position drastically affects revenues. The niche product placement is the best financial option. We have gathered data and concluded a final recommendation for the product launch. With the existing Paramount market, the best method is to launch in the niche market. It is critical to not reduce the cannibalization of the existing products and trends show that this product will do better with a specialized market. The business plan will decrease last year's marketing budget while not sacrificing advertising reach. Existing channels and shelf space will be utilized for accessibility to the product. If Clean Edge ultimately becomes a mainstream product, Paramount can fully advertise and promote to the market, therefore managing the market demand. And this tiered marketing strategy will stagger promotion and interest. In the first tier, social media and word of mouth advertisement will be used. In the second tier, digital advertisements such as ads on related websites or in related newspapers will be utilized. In the third tier, considered retail promotion, Discounts, such as coupons or rebates, will be available in stores to increase curiosity and sales. Thank you for watching our presentation. We are confident in our business case to grow Paramount's product line. Several questions will now be posted for discussion. What are the arguments for launching Clean Edge as a niche product and a mainstream product? How does Paramount currently compare to their competitors? Does their strong or weak position affect how much or how they launch their new product. What additional marketing strategies do you believe would be cost effective for Clean Edge in the niche market? Why do you think Randall believes his decision to name the new razor either Clean Edge by Paramount or Paramount Clean Edge will have an impact on the rate of cannibalization? Should Clean Edge be developed into the replacement product for the Aging Pro after it's introduced as a niche product? Thank you again for watching our presentation and we look forward to the discussion.